Hello my nerd musician friend, in this video I'm going to talk about the 6 biggest mistakes that makers do while building MIDI controllers. Hello and welcome to The Nerd Musician, my name is Gustavo Silveira and here we talk mainly about how to build MIDI controllers. I have built a lot of them and I have hundreds of students that have built hundreds of them. And I made a lot of mistakes and I still do. And also having all those students, I know what is the main mistakes that people do while making MIDI controllers. So this video here is intended for you to stop wasting a lot of your time while making these mistakes. A video that I wish I had seen before I started making mine. So let's get it started. So first, choosing the wrong Arduino. But what an Arduino even is? An Arduino is a board that has a microcontroller that transforms information from the physical world into the digital world. You can get the press of a button or the turn of a potentiometer and make it into digital information. And with this information, you can send MIDI, for example. So press a button and send a MIDI note. And the Arduino is by far the most popular board for making MIDI controllers. But there are several different Arduino boards, so which one to choose? I've already made a video specific just about that, you can check it here. But what I can tell to you is that you need to think about a couple things. How many components you want in your project? Does the board need to be tiny? And you need to choose a board that is MIDI class compliant or plug and play. So depending on the number of components you have, you need to choose an Arduino with a certain number of pins or inputs. An Arduino Uno will have only 13 digital inputs, while the Arduino Mega will have about 50 something. However, there's a trick that you can use a small board with a multiplexer, which is a component that increases the number of inputs of an Arduino. So with that in mind, I like to use the Arduino Pro Micro. The Arduino Pro Micro is tiny, is MIDI class compliant, and with a multiplexer, I can connect more than 100 of components in this Arduino. But if for whatever reason you need more pins in a tiny board, I highly recommend the Tinsy family boards. They are also tiny, they are MIDI class compliant, and have more pins than the Arduino Pro Micro. So why not go always for the Tin CLC? Because the Arduino Pro Micro costs about $3 and the Tin C costs about $12. And if you live in the United States or Europe, that might not be a big deal. But if you live in countries like I live, like Brazil, the Tin C can get really expensive. But also, besides making a final project, you always want to prototype before to test your ideas. And for that, you need an Arduino that you can use jumpers, because with that, you don't need to solder anything. So an Arduino Uno and a breadboard will be great for you to prototype your project. So to summarize, my favorite Arduino for prototyping is the Arduino Uno, plus a breadboard, and for final projects are the Arduino Pro Micro and maybe plus a multiplexer, and the Tinsy LC. So second big mistake, using wires in big projects. And I am so guilty of that, as you can see in this video here. I even put a video on YouTube about my biggest fail, this huge project that I tried to do with wires, and I failed completely. Using wires can get really messy, they are not really reliable and it's really hard to debug, to find where the problem is if something happens. And the bigger the project gets, the more problems you can have. A way to avoid wires is creating your own printed circuit board. PCBs can eliminate completely the use of wires in your circuit. But for that, you need to use a software to design your PCB in the computer and then you can export the files to a company to get a really professional board. And I just released a brand new course, the KiCad PCB Design, where I teach how to make PCBs from scratch to production. This way you can get super reliable PCBs that also look super professional and it will make you to get rid of wires 
forever. Besides, assembling a circuit with a PCB is way, way faster. Another mistake I see a lot is people trying to start too big. And the reason that I don't advise to start big is that it's really hard to debug to find the problem in bigger projects. And believe me, you're going to have problems. I always have them, my MIDI controllers never work in the first time, but because I have been doing this for years, I have enough experience and knowledge to find the problem quickly and solve this and just make my MIDI controller work fast. So it's better for you if you start small and learn how to debug to find a problem first in smaller projects. So what I think you should do, let's say if you want to make a project with 100 potentiometers, which is a lot. First, make a prototype with just a couple potentiometers, let's say three, and make them work. For making a MIDI controller with that many potentiometers, you need multiplexers. So first, make a prototype with just one multiplexer, and then make sure you can use more than one multiplexer, like two. After you can make a prototype with a couple potentiometers and two multiplexers, now you can go to your final project. So think like that for any project you wanna do. First, create a proof of concept. I always make a prototype with all the components you're gonna use in the final project, but with just a few units. Another mistake is not using the appropriate tools for making your MIDI controller. And they are basic tools, but you need to have them. You need to have a good soldering iron, wire cutter, wire stripper, solder sucker. The solder sucker is important to undo your soldering mistakes. And a multimeter to debug your circuit. That's the bare minimum and get good quality stuff. And I put here in the description where you can buy this gear. And the fifth mistake is not planning ahead, not prototyping. Even if your project is small, you should prototype first. And what I mean about prototyping is using an Arduino and a breadboard, where you can try things out without committing to soldering. This will allow you to know if your code is working, if your circuit is actually wired correctly. You don't want to learn that your circuit is wrong after you soldered it. You don't want to redo things. You want to solder things knowing that it's going to work if you do it correctly. So I advise you first to sketch your circuit on Fritzing. Fritzing is a software that you can make the layout of your circuit in the breadboard, just like you do in real life. And then you can go for an Arduino Uno, for example, and a breadboard and jumpers and connect things and program and see if that's working. Of course, if your project is too big, you don't need to put everything there, but at least the proof of concept you need to do. And if you didn't put everything in the prototype, make sure that you know what you were doing. And the last mistake is trying to learn only through YouTube tutorials, instructables, and etc. That's how I learned actually and took me about six months to build my first MIDI controller. It's really hard to learn how to build MIDI controllers only copying and pasting codes from other people without the proper guidance. So for that, I created the course The Making Music with Arduino, where I teach the step-by-step -step of how you can build your MIDI controllers using buttons, potentiometers, rotary encoders, motorized faders, displays, LEDs, yada, yada, yada. So it's a super complete course that will allow you to build your first MIDI controllers just in a couple days, less than a week. And you don't even need to learn how to code. I teach you how to adapt my code in the fastest way possible. So put in the comments below which mistakes have you done and give a like to this video if you liked it and subscribe if you didn't do it yet. So see you in the next video. Ciao.